uh, some of the Atlantic City casinos have been kind of celebrating lately. No, it's not the latest gambling revenue numbers. They have been down once again. But the casinos were certainly happy to see that Poker Stars deal to buy the Atlantic Club fall apart. Joining us now from Washington via Skype is the president and CEO of the American Gambling Association, Frank Farenkoff, Jr. Uh, Frank, it's good of you to come on the program. We appreciate that. Why was, was your organization so intent upon not seeing Poker Stars get a hold of the Atlantic Club? Well, because the, the matter is still, believe it or not, still pending, uh, before the New Jersey Gaming Authorities. I, I really can't comment other than, uh, I mean, it's it's clear from reading our petition that our concern is, and it's not only in New Jersey, it's in every state where there's legal gaming. We're an unusual industry. We want tough regulation with law enforcement oversight because that provides the integrity of our business. And we were concerned about some of the, the, the past history of, uh, of that company that it applied. We just wanted to make sure uh, that some of those items were brought forth and we wanted an opportunity to present it. So as our lawyers tell us, the, the petition speaks for itself as to what that past history was, but uh, I'm not sure it's over yet. As you know, uh, there's litigation now over whether or not uh, uh, the deal has been canceled. So I'm, I'm just not free to, to speak much more than that, Mike. I understand uh, that, but the, 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 there are some who say, though, that basically uh, the casinos don't want to see anything that really moves the Internet gaming thing forward too quickly. Uh, is that accurate or not? Well, that, that's false. I mean, it, I've, I've represented this industry for a long, long time, and I can tell you uh, they were they were hoping it was going to be done four years ago. That's why they worked so long and hard with uh, the majority leader, Harry Reid, and the former assistant uh, uh, minority leader uh, in the Senate, Senator John Kyle of Arizona, to try to get a bill passed. Unfortunately, they were never able to introduce a piece of legislation. So that's not true. We've been very aggressively at this for at least four years. We want to get it done, but we want to get it done in the right way that provides basic consumer protection, protection for underage gaming, and for that small group of people, about 1%, who can't gamble responsibly. There's some say here in New Jersey that they need this. Atlantic City desperately needs something like this because you take a look at the revenue numbers and you see the declines here. Yet at the same time, as, as your organization points out, gambling is growing in most of the markets around the country where it's either been introduced or it has been operational for a number of years as well. So I ask you this, what's the problem in Atlantic City? Oh, I think it's been a, I, you know, I've had the opportunity over the last 18 years to speak many times before gaming conferences there. I, but I really think, looking at it from today, Atlantic City was unlucky. That's a hard thing to say if you're in the gaming business. But if you really look back to mid-2008, before the world crashed, there were all sorts of projects online. You had uh, expansion of, of the retail space uh, in Atlantic City, fine restaurants out on the, uh, on the boardwalk. It was really, I thought, in a, a, a rebirth. And then suddenly the economic crash hit, and it just hit them at the worst time. Uh, so, you know, it's been a tough, tough fight. There's also competition uh, with uh, Pennsylvania getting not only slot machines but table games, along with Delaware, a neighboring state, uh, New York now at the racetracks with slots. So uh, competition has come in and hit them along with a lot of bad luck. Frank, only about 30 seconds left here. What is the, it, can Atlantic City recapture what it had before, or does it have to adjust to a new reality? I think it has to adjust to a new reality, but I think it, uh, it can come back. I think a Revel is going through a bankruptcy now. I think they're going to be in, in a better position financially. There's clearly got to be more attention to the other amenities. People don't just come to Las Vegas or other gaming sites anywhere in the world just to gamble. They want fine shows, first-class hotel rooms, uh, Michelin star restaurants, etc. And so that's what's got to be a major part of the offering. Frank Frankoff, Jr., have to leave it there. Thank you for coming on the program, sir. Pleasure.